The breaking news out of Baltimore. Let's read the report straight from Jacina Anderson. She said, uh, I'm told the Ravens are signing linebacker Kyle Vinoy. He is expected to go to the practice squad first per source. So uh, this is a move that I'm sure we all like, that we all appreciate, and that we are all glad that it happened. I probably wish it would have happened a little bit sooner, but a hey, better late than never, right? And, and with the Ravens linebacker situation right now, with them continuing to deal with injury after injury after injury, we got a Dafe away out for who knows how long. We got David Ajabo who just got hurt in this last game. Who knows how long he's going to be out for. We got Tyus Bowser who's been out, but he's not eligible to come back until week five, so hopefully he'll be ready by then. And we just got to wait and see what happens with all of those guys. Uh, but the Ravens are thin. They are very, very thin at outside linebacker age. Of course, Jadavian Clowney, he's been doing this thing, but he can't do it by himself. Uh, the Ravens called up Jeremiah Moon for this last game, and he had a pretty good game. Uh, but the Ravens just, they need more. They need more, not only depth, but they need more quality depth. And with Kyle Vinoy, um, I would really expect him to jump right in there right away. But Jeff Zrebic did say something yesterday that was significant, I thought, because he talked about how Kyle Vinoy, he did not have a training camp. So it's possible that there could be a ramp up period with him having to learn the playbook and him having to just get in football shape. Now, will that mean we won't see him right away this Sunday against the Browns? I don't think so. I think the Ravens are at a point where they just like, look, we need more bodies. We need more healthy people because we just ain't got none like that. Uh, because, again, person after person after person, this long injury list that we see every week with the Baltimore Ravens. And it's scary. But anyway, Kyle Vinoy is officially a Baltimore Raven, so that's a beautiful thing. That's a, a good thing. Uh, we wish it would have happened sooner in the offseason, but for whatever reason, it didn't. But again, we're here now. We made it. So what does Kyle Vinoy bring to the Baltimore Ravens? Well, we spoke about it uh, a little bit yesterday. Kyle Vinoy is a sort of do-it-all type of guy. Uh, he can give you some solid production sack-wise with as far as a pass rusher. He can help uh, as an edge guy to, to help defend the run because, you know, phew, <laughs> Ravens needed all the help that they could have possibly gotten with that uh, against those Colts. Because, again, Ravens, with them it runs up the middle that the Colts were doing, Ravens were holding that down. They, they were holding that down for the most part. It's like, all right, Ravens, let's get it, baby. But they could not just – they could not hold down the edge. They couldn't do it. They could not set that edge on Sunday. And that resulted – I think I read the stats that said – Four of Zach Moss's, he had four runs that ended up being like 69 or maybe 75 yards that, that were all runs to the outside. So that's where the, a huge chunk of his production came because Ravens just simply could not set that edge. Uh, so hopefully Calvinoy can come in right away and just help out with that because we need it badly. Uh, he's also somebody that can drop back. He, again, he's a do-it-all type of linebacker. Again, just like Tyus Bowser. Uh, so hopefully when Tyus Bowser does come back, who knows when that's going to be. Uh, then they can just they can feed off of each other and we'll see how the Ravens put them in different situations to where they can complement each other. They can complement the other defensive players on the field uh, and they can just make it work because Ravens so, something's got to work. Something's got to work uh, because, again, with the defense, the defense hasn't even been bad. They've had some some issues here and there, but overall, the defense hasn't been bad. Uh, it's been an offense that's been like up and down, but especially in this last game, there was a lot of downs. Uh, obviously, with the turnovers and whatnot, that was big, and then sometimes they just the, – the miscues. Uh, but they need to get it cleaned up, something that we have to keep in mind, something that I, I forget because it's week three. Um, this is a brand new offense. Not that there's any excuses or anything like that, but uh, this is a brand new offense, and they are – they're three weeks in. They're three weeks in. Remember this offseason, we all talked about how we expected there to be some growing pains, and, and we are certainly seeing that. Uh, we saw some growing pains in the two wins that the Baltimore Ravens got in week one and two, and we saw some growing pains in the loss that they took in week three. Uh, but it is a brand-new offense. Uh, remember Lamar, he hadn't played for a while, and, and he didn't play in the preseason. A lot of these starters didn't play in the preseason. So they're, they're getting their reps now. They're getting it in now. Uh, and then, of course, you got the injuries and all that. I don't even want to talk about all the injuries. But we got to talk about all the injuries because that's something that keeps happening. Now, uh, Baltimore Ravens were very, very busy yesterday because them signing Kyle Vinoy was not the only move that they made. Uh, they also signed some familiar faces. They brought back Ty Tariq Black. 
uh, and wide receiver Dante Demas Jr. So they signed both of those guys to the practice squad. Now, uh, we talked about how with Kyle Vannoy, um, them signing him is a kind of scary indication for what's possibly happening with Odafe Away uh, and with David Ajabo. I feel like that sort of paints a picture that those guys are going to be out for a while. Uh, but then uh, with them signing Tariq Black and Dante Demas Jr., uh, that could be, is it precautionary or are they expecting more receivers to be out for uh, an even longer time? Because we know the Ravens are dealing with injuries to their receivers. It's, it was a spot where they just had so much depth there and it's like magically it just disappeared just like that. Just like that. Obviously, Zay Flowers is still good. Nelson Aguilar is still good. Devin Duvernay, I know he was dealing with an injury last week during uh, practice, but he was still good. Uh, they lost Tylen Wallace, though. They placed Tylen Wallace on injury reserve. Will he be back later on in the season? It's to be determined. Don't know the severity of the injury yet. Uh, but also, Rashad Bateman, he's somebody that they lost during the game. They said his hamstring was tightening up on him. So today will be a big day because we will start to have a lot of our questions answered as far as who's coming back, who's returning, uh, who's going to be back on the practice field. Uh, so we'll look to hopefully see Rashad Bateman, but uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't surprise me if he wasn't out there. Uh, and then you got Odell Beckham Jr. who started dealing with an ankle injury. He left the Bengals game uh, early on uh, with an ankle injury, never returned, and then he didn't play in this game against the Colts. So we'll see, hopefully see him uh, in this game against the Browns Because Ravens need all the firepower That they can possibly get uh, Browns are hot right now Brown, Browns are strong Especially that defense But I, I just wonder if the, the signings of Tariq Black and Dante Demas Jr. Are also an indication Of Odell Beckham Jr. status Rashad Bateman status Obviously one, it is to possibly cover uh, Tylen Wallace because he's out He's out for at least uh, Four games Because he's on injury reserve uh, so again, don't know how long he's going to be out for, so we'll see. But I wonder what that could mean. But we'll have that answer because today in practice, we're going to – not even just with the wide receivers, just with everybody uh, because we uh, there's a lot of people that's out. Marlon Humphrey, hopefully he can make his return. Ronnie Stanley, Linda Baum is still out. Uh, with Marcus Williams, who knows when he's going to come back. Again, there's a lot of people that are missing right now. Uh, but hopefully today – they can get some reinforcements. Now, another move that they made with bringing on two to the practice squad, they released two from the practice squad. One of those that they released was guard Kyle Fuller. Not the cornerback Kyle Fuller, but the guard Kyle Fuller. They released him from the practice squad to make room uh, for Tariq Black. And they released, oh, they got him listed as a tight end. Tight end Ben Mason? Okay. I thought that they would have him listed as a fullback, but we know he's a fullback, but you know, Ravens with their designations and the way that they list different players and whatnot. Uh, they tight end Ben Mason, fullback Ben Mason, H-back Ben Mason, whatever you want to call them. Uh, ben Mason has been released uh, from the Baltimore Ravens practice squad. Uh, so the Ravens were very, very active yesterday getting this, these things done uh, and making it happen. So today's a big day. Today's a very, very, very big day. Uh, we could get some great news later on today, and hopefully we will. Or we could get some bad news later on today, and hopefully we won't. Uh, I really, just being honest, expect a bit of both uh, from John Harbaugh when he provides the updates, and, and if, even before we get the update from John Harbaugh, because I'm sure they'll go through practice first, and then after practice, John Harbaugh will speak to the media, and then maybe a few players will speak to the media as well. So we'll see how that goes. I love to see people doing good. A special shout out to my guy A.O. Shags because he was out there at, at, at M&T Bank got to perform for everybody at the bank so I was super happy for him I was super proud of him man uh, just to see I, I love seeing people grow uh, and, and I have been seeing him around for a while I'm sure all y'all up in Baltimore definitely been seeing him around for a while but I've been seeing him pop up on social media doing all these different dances and stuff uh, but to see him go from that to being able to perform in front of everybody uh, at M&T Bank Stadium uh, and I know there was some other people too. I, I think it was, was Bunky. It was uh, it was a, it was, a, it was quite a few people that was performing uh for the Baltimore Ravens. And I was like, all right, Ravens, you you really getting to the heart of the city, man. I, I really appreciated seeing that though, because I I love when people who rep whatever they rep when they get recognition and, and, and honorable recognition for what they do. Uh, so shout out to all of them guys. Shout, shout out to all of y'all, man. I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all keep doing what you've been doing. I love you. I appreciate you supporting. Thank you for being who y'all are. Y'all are real, real good people.